Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantanetti, and we are here to bring you the word today. You know, God is moving among his people, but are his people moving with God? Well, today's message is simple, but straight to the point, and the title is, Until Now the Kingdom, Until Now the Kingdom. Well, what does that mean, unto now the kingdom? Let's read. But from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent sees it or takes it by force. Very important. The first thing I want to share, which is very important also, is that this is a spiritual battle. People may say, well, are you promoting physical Uh, violence absolutely not but if someone comes against you and they want to hurt you you have the right to defend yourself and so by all means defend yourself but this is not a physical battle understand we wrestle against flesh we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and therefore we have to take on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand in the evil day Now, remember that those who take on the armor of God will find themselves in a constant battle against evil forces of darkness. And also remember that warfare is the intense grip we take on life. So the exertion of any strength is warfare. You may say the exertion of any strength, meaning this. If you use your physical muscles to pick up weights, you are fighting against the weights. Your muscles are fighting against the weights. That's why it's a warfare, muscle against weight. Well, we know that there's a lot of things happening in this world. And as Christians, I said Christians, believers, that's right. Don't be ashamed to be called like Christ or one of Christ's servants because we are in his service. Now, we just read that there are two violence taking place, two violence taking place. And we need to look at that again. It says, But from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Now understand that there are two acts of violence mentioned in the above scripture. Two acts of violence. And so also understand that the first means to reflex and to crowd oneself in as to seize something, and it is to it is to bring suffering from crowding. You can die if a crowd begins to press you. Now, the second act of violence, remember, the kingdom of God suffers violence, meaning they're pressing in to crush you. But the second act of violence, which says, but the violent take it by force, It's in reference to being an enforcer with the energetic strength to resist. So understand that we are to resist that which is evil because it comes to crush us. Now, when you stand up for truth, remember, somebody is going to be offended when you stand for truth. But we don't stand in our own strength. We stand in the strength of the Lord. There's a great quote by John Donne, and I want to quote it, but understand from the point of view that we need to take action and we need to speak the truth. He says, and I quote, Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never sent to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for you. God is calling you into the battle And he is calling you to bring his justice and his righteousness to the streets. And he has inscribed victory in your heart already. In the heart of every warrior, he has inscribed victory. Christ is calling you to rise and go into the battle. But the battle is to stand in righteousness and speak that which is truth. I like what... Linnaeus Banks says, I live for the cause that needs assistance, for the wrong that needs resistance, 
for the future in the distance and the good that I can do. Understand, as soldiers of righteousness, you are operating in the gospel of Jesus Christ and bringing his works forth. And he trains your hands, that is, your hands for battle. You know, the best way you can look at this is that God has given you the truth and you must lay hands upon the truth and arm yourself with the truth. Because from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God or the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force. You are called. Now, the most important fact of the Christian soldier is the character made in integrity. Remember that integrity is an important aspect of every person who walks in righteousness. But the attack is against the image of God's word and the image of the word of God is being vehemently attacked. And you say, how is that? Because they keep speaking against that which is truth. Now, you may say, who God is calling to the battle? Who? What? Me? To be violent? Yes, but it's not the violence that you and I think. It is not a physical violence, but you have to be physically involved in the sense that you must be present. All soldiers must be here. If we lose our love, we may never gain it back again, said Philip Bailey in his song, All Soldiers. The church must stand ready in prayer and move the action to establish the kingdom of God, which is his righteousness working on the earth. Think about that, please. Don't let that escape you. The kingdom of God is God's rule over his people to demonstrate his purpose and destiny for his glory. It is not for us. Now, what do we stand of? Well, Isaiah said something in chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. He says, Woe unto them that unrighteous decree decrees, and that right grievousness which they have prescribed, to turn aside the needy from judgment, and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey, and that they may rob the fatherless. Oh, God, have mercy upon us. We must lay down now and put me in a surety with you. Who is he that will strike hands with me, Job said in 17.3. Every hand in spiritual warfare may strike with truth. Did you hear that? You don't need to strike someone with your hands physically, but you must strike as with your hands the truth that comes out of your mouth. You hear it all the time. Everyone uses it. We must fight. We must fight. Well, some people fight physically to try to bring in what is right. But the Bible tells us, James says, that our anger does not bring about the righteousness of God. No. I love what Psalms 47 verse 1 says. It says, Oh, clap your hands, O ye people. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Wow, I love that. Well, we must be representatives of the kingdom of God and constitute the law of his word. His truth is the principle of holy violence which takes the kingdom by force. Let me tell you something. The best warfare you can ever do against any evil principality is to do what is right. Remember that truth is the voice of of triumph. Truth is the voice of triumph. If you're going to triumph, if you're going to do anything that's going to bring change, it's going to have to be through truth. The Apostle Paul, as a soldier, he was extraordinary. He labored relentlessly for the spreading of the gospel and also to present every man perfect through the doctrines of Christ. Paul was unstoppable and resilient while bringing forth the gospel. He was a watchman of the truth and feared no man. He was willing to die for the mission appointed for. Now think about this. God has called you into the battle. The church has an unseen enemy. We know who he is. 
He's the accuser of the brethren. He is the one that has brought much, much conflict to the body of Christ. His land operation scope, which is works of evil, continues to be a significant conflict against the church. Remember that. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus has come to bring life and to give that life more abundantly. The enemy is a master of building contention and strife among the brethren, and he creates schisms to keep believers in confusion. You know what the word schism is used eight times in Scripture, and it means a rent. That's right, to tear. A division, to bring disharmony, contradiction, disunion, or a split. And Paul uses this, this word to, to the Corinthian church. He heard that there were schisms among them, that they were being rent, divided. And folks, let me tell you something. The best thing we can do as the body of Christ beyond denominations is to come to the one truth. That is, Jesus Christ is Lord of lords and King of kings. He is God. He is the Savior. And we worship him. We worship God. We have the Holy Spirit. The church is one. There is one faith. There is one hope. There is one God. There is one spirit. There is one um, uh, father of all. One Lord, one king. Let me share something with you. Where there are disputes among the church, tensions of discouragement will arise and bring evil factions and disorder that will weaken the believer's devotion to the kingdom of God. God has called you to stand firm. I like what the early writer Clement says. The early Christian writer Clement harshly condemned the divisions, splits, schisms, and differences within the church, which his words were tearing apart the body. Even back hundreds of years ago, we see the enemy working. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now, we have been sharing on this scripture yesterday, but understand that the Greek word for try in the, above, in the above verse means to approve, test, and examine. Don't just say yes. Understand that God has called you with a holy calling. God has called you with a definite calling. It was the power of Jesus that apprehended the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. He was on his way to destroy or to try to destroy the church and the faith, but he could not because the one who is our faith appeared before him and he stopped him dead on his tracks. Look what Paul says, though. Even in his going forth to preach the gospel and to bring forth order, he says, not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that. I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I was apprehended of Christ. Understand the word apprehension he uses means to be arrested, arrested, eagerly taken, seized by a dominant force to be possessed as a servant. You have been possessed. You have been taken by Christ and he holds you firmly in his hands and he says, come to the battle with me. The battle of truth, righteousness, the enemy intends to distort the perspective of the Christian's objectives through lies to hinder the church operation of spiritual warfare. But I got news for you. Christ in you is a warrior. The nature and the mission of the church should give leaders the incentive to provide basic training for sound teaching about the Savior. Did you know that? Tell your leaders, we need sound teaching. Give us sound teaching Look what, you know what Paul did at the end of his life? He was at the point that he didn't, he was not concerned. He didn't let fear come into his life about the kingdom. He preached the kingdom of God and he was not afraid. He was arrested and he was able to rent his own house. And the Bible tells us this, 
that he instructed about the kingdom of God. He instructed about the knowledge of Jesus Christ with no one hindering. And listen, instruct about his kingdom and knowledge of spiritual military operations. This operation is the evangel the evangel excuse me, the evangelical or the evangelism of the gospel. Paul was a soldier under the command and authority of Jesus Christ. The battles were always to press forward with the excellence of the gospel and his fuel was to bring the message of save of the of the savior to people he said for the prize of the high calling of god in christ jesus he was resilient he said he presses forward toward the mark let me share this real quickly before we close. The word press in the, green, in the Greek means to pursue with the force of a persecutor or prosecutor without being unfaithful or intimidated by anyone. He says, I press forward. I pursue. I am a prosecutor against that which is unfaithful, the, tr the, the, the lies against the truth. It means to run as an errant man, a waiter or attendant. He says, I have become a waiter, a servant of the word of God, and I will not stop. I am employed by the kingdom of heaven to provide a service for the public people. And folks, wherever you are, shine your light and let the power of the Holy Spirit flow through you. And it happened when Jesus finished commanding his 12 disciples, he left there to teach and to proclaim in the cities. Do you get that? Do you get that? God has called you that you can step out by faith and know that the land operations that you're called to, your missionary trips are marked carefully and planned with the sole intention of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to save souls. Launch the word of God. Don't be afraid. The scriptures will give you wisdom to say that, which, is need to be, which needs to be said. And do like or have faith in what Jesus said when he said, in that hour, don't be concerned about what you're going to say or how you're going to say it, for the spirit of your father will speak through you. He will speak the words that people need to hear. Paul's mind and heart were concerned with the truth because he understood that from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God is suffering a pressing in of people who want to destroy it. But we must stand with the Holy Spirit's energy, with a holy violence, and speak the word of truth regardless what we see in life. God bless you. Have a wonderful spirit-filled day. You are Christ's soldier. Hallelujah.